I posted last night about an encounter I'd had with a neckbeard who tapped me on the shoulder, asked me if I was single and then flipped out when I said no. I mentioned that I'd dealt with a Karen not 20 minutes before that and would post that story if folks were interested, so here it is. In my other post, I explained that I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a genetic disorder affecting collagen. Among many other symptoms, it tends to make people look significantly younger than we are, so although I'm 32 years old, I'm often mistaken for being a teenager. I dress in a very goth-slash-punk style, which I'm sure probably adds to that. EDS often causes something called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which, in simple terms, means that being upright causes my heart rate to increase and my blood pressure to decrease and the longer I'm standing, the worse it gets. If I'm standing for too long, I black out. I take medication that helps a lot, but I've had to stop taking it in order to get the Rona vaccine, so my heart rate and blood pressure are completely uncontrolled, ATM. I'd just arrived at my local shopping mall and got hit with a wave of dizziness, which is a surefire sign that I need to sit down before I fall down. There were three armchairs together for customers to use and I sat down in one that had an abandoned, empty shopping trolley next to it. The other two seats were occupied. I checked my numbers with the blood pressure monitor I carry with me and they were pretty bad, BP of 105.68 and HR of 138 BPM, so I downed a few salt tablets and started scrolling through Reddit on my phone while I waited for things to improve. About two minutes later, the wild Karen appeared. ETA, Karen matched the stereotype in every conceivable way and looked to be 45 to 50 years old. She marched over and barked at me to get out of her seat, claiming she'd clearly left her trolley next to it to reserve it. I told her the seats are there for everyone's use and people leave empty trolleys all over the shopping center, so that really didn't mean anything. During previous disputes about seating, I've sometimes told people I couldn't move anyway because of my BP-HR condition but it's never seemed to help the situation and is none of their business, so I don't tend to mention it unless it's genuinely necessary. Karen, hand on hip, said she didn't ask for my idiot opinions and that when an adult tells me to jump, the only acceptable response is how high. I laughed and said, Lady, I'm 32 years old and I don't answer to you. Leave me the hell alone. She scoffed and said, Bullshit. Don't you dare lie to me. Where the bloody hell are your parents? I said that's none of her damn business and to stop harassing me, because I'm not moving. As I was saying this, an older man vacated one of the other armchairs with a groan and an eye roll, you and me both, mate, so I gestured to it and said, there you go, Karen, there's a free seat right there. Happy now? Karen folded her arms and, with an entirely misplaced air of superiority, said, that's your seat. This one is mine and you are going to move, young lady. Entirely done with her shit, I laughed and said a simple no, going back to my phone. At this point, she pretty much lost it. She shouted, get your fat arse out of my fucking chair. And kicked the side of the seat hard enough to make me jump. As I responded with a stun, wow, you're legitimately crazy, aren't you? A member of the cleaning staff took notice and came over. She told Karen to calm down and asked me if I needed her to call security. I was going to say yes please, but Karen jumped in and snapped, please do. And then, to me, I would love to see security drag you out by your ear. He must have been nearby, because a security guard quickly appeared and asked me what the problem was. Of course, Karen again jumped in and started telling him that this stroppy little brat had pushed her out of her seat and stolen it from her, and how it was clearly hers, because that's my trolley, right there. The security guard turned to me and asked if that was what had happened. I said, actually, like I told her, I'm 32 years old and she didn't show up until after I'd sat down. She said she'd reserve the seat and I told her that's not how it works. She's been harassing me to get me to move and your colleague here saw her shouting and kicking the chair. Karen gasped and with an accusational pointed finger, shouted, you lying little bitch. But the cleaner backed me up. The security guard calmly told Karen that she can't claim or reserve seats she's not using and that if she wanted to sit down, there were now two free seats right there, the third person had now also left. Karen went red in the face and barked back, listen here, you will make her move, 
or I will be having words with your manager. The security guard sighed and told Karen that she had two options, either she could walk away now, leave me alone and be allowed to get on with her day, or he would be escorting her out of the shopping mall. Surprisingly, Karen actually went with a third option. She scoffed and stammered and eventually opted to shout about how unfucking believable this all was and that she was going to the center management's office to get the security guard and the cleaner fired right fucking now, and stormed off without her empty trolley, of course. The security guard let her leave and unfortunately, I don't know what happened with her after that point. The security guard apologized to me for her behavior and I told him it wasn't his fault and that I was sorry he and the cleaner had to deal with shit like that, too. He excused himself, saying he should probably follow her to make sure she made it to the center manager's office without any further incidents along the way and I chatted with the cleaner a bit about how ridiculous and childish people can be. She told me this was far from the worst or weirdest she'd seen and that I wouldn't believe the shit some people do, but didn't elaborate. A plus side was that the whole situation had aided in increasing my blood pressure, so I sat there for about another 10 minutes to let my heart rate level out and was then able to get up and carry on with my day. If I see that security guard while I'm at the shops this afternoon, I'll be sure to ask him what happened and update this post. So this just happened and I'm still shaking my head. For some context, I'm autistic, and really don't handle confrontation well, however, I'm currently training my border collie, Storm, to be a psychiatric assistance animal, we are so very close to him being fully certified, but for the moment, our trainer and I organize passes for us to both go to buildings, planes, trains, etc., so I can expose him to different environments, sounds, smells etc. Today we were getting on a train to the city, 1 hour 15 minutes ride. We got on at the front next to the guard, showed him the approval letter stating Storm is in training, and all was good. We boarded, and Storm laid under my legs taking up minimal room as per his training. We get to the first stop and in comes a Karen, K, and her younger daughter, Karen Jr., KJ, they both sit on the other side of the aisle, next to me. After a few minutes, KJ notices Storm laying under my legs and says to K, Mom, that man has a dog, can I pat it? and she replies with something along the lines of just ask, but I can't be 100% certain as I wasn't actively paying attention. Next thing I know, I hear excuse me? From KJ, and the following conversation ensues KJ could I pat your dog? Me no sorry, he's currently training and can't be pet KJ what do you mean he's training? Me he's training to be an assistance animal, and it's very important that no one interferes with him K come back sweetie, unfortunately, some people don't know how to share I tried to remain calm but Storm instantly knew my anxiety was flaring up, so he got up and comforted me as he is trained to do. I reward him with a treat, a good boy and finally the lay command, at which point the Karen approached us K you should be teaching him to interact with children, my daughter just wanted to give him a pat, and you rewarding him for ignoring her is just plain rude me excuse me? He's working, and currently in training, I rewarded him for responding to me appropriately, not for ignoring your kid, leave us alone please K you're lying. He's not a Labrador, they're the only dogs that are smart enough to become assistance animals, he looks like a border collie, they are just farm dogs, so quit lying at this, my anxiety was starting to peak, and Storm got up and sat on my lap to comfort and calm me down, I reached for my treat's pouch, and began to get a treat out, when, Karen reached in and took a treat before me, handing it to Storm K good boy, me get away from me, I screamed and began crying the train came to an unscheduled stop at the next station and a group of police officers got on K and KJ were moved to the next carriage, and we continued on, with an officer staying with me until the next station. Fast forward to the end of the line, and we got into the city, as I was talking to the guard, who had actually organized for the police to join us, K and KJ saw us. KJ ran up to us and just as I saw her hand reach out and down, I gave Storm the command other side he swiftly moved behind and to the left side, away from her. Me I told you no. KJ my mom said I could, so let me. With that, she tried to pull his leash out of my hand. I dropped the lead and gave Storm the command danger to which, he ran and sat under a seat in the middle of the platform. Karen then enters, pushing me on the shoulder, and by this stage, my fight or flight response was the only thing in control and I pushed her back, knocking her to the ground. More police were on the platform in what felt like seconds. I called for Storm as they arrived, handed them his paperwork and told them everything that had happened. I'm now writing this from inside a police station while waiting to do a victim impact statement. The Karen got arrested for assault and interfering with a service animal. 
Today I went shopping in a member's warehouse store. I was in line waiting to check out and this total stranger of a woman asks me about an item I have in my shopping cart, breakfast bars that my husband really likes. I tell that they are good and my husband's favorite. She says she is going to get them so I start to tell her where they are located in the store. She says, well since you know where they are I will just take these and you can go get some more. I tell her no you aren't taking those and just as I tell her that the person who helps expedite the checkout process comes up and starts to get all the barcodes turned upright. The Karen tells her that she is getting my breakfast bars. And I say no again, the employee directs her to where she can get her own box and Karen literally stomps her foot and says, why can't I have these? The employee tells her because they're in my cart and I am checking out now. The employee did have someone come over and take Karen to the where the breakfast bars were located. I did get the employee's name and I left her a positive review on the website. I'll start by saying this story is from about five years ago and my therapist mentioned it in passing as it was something I had spoken with her about years ago regarding my PTSD. I figured it's finally time to post this gem of a woman's story. It's around 11 p.m. on a Saturday night and I'm sitting at home just getting ready to go to bed. I'm an on-call tow truck operator and figure I'll be going out early the next morning. Right as my head hit the pillow my next tell style two-way radio chirped and a dispatcher goes hey OP are you still awake? Yeah I'm up. Good we've got a one car accident in the next town over, PD wants it Expedia Ted so please hurry but be safe. 10-4 I'm out the door. After a roughly 20 minute drive I'm headed out of this small town looking for the accident and I see it, the coroner and forensics vans parked in the road amongst a dozen squad cars. A typical one-car accident has one officer sitting with it for paperwork reasons with the tow operator, obviously I know things just got a lot darker than I had originally been told. Sparing the gory details what had happened was six kids between 17 and 20 had been in an SUV while driving drunk and only the driver had a seatbelt on. The vehicle swerved off the road and the driver went to correct, however one. He overcorrected and two. The road on that side had about an 8-inch lip which made it extremely rough of a transition to pull a vehicle back on the road. As it came back on the road the driver fishtailed, trying to correct back in the other direction and again overcorrecting. This sent the vehicle rolling down the road in and out of the 4-foot drainage ditch next to the road. All five passengers were ejected and died on the scene. One of the passengers was trapped under the SUV that came to a rest in the drainage ditch on its roof. The other passengers were strewn across the roadway with sheets over them. I set up my Peterbilt rollback at a 70-degree angle across this two-lane road and start to work with forensics slash the coroner to remove the vehicle from the ditch as well as preserve as much evidence as possible. No sooner than I get this winch tight on my truck do I hear frantic beeping of a car horn. I turn around and directly behind me is a woman who looks to be in her early 40s who is now just holding the horn down letting it blare non-stop as she's yelling out of her window. I ignore her and turn around to go back to this delicate job I'm in the middle of wondering how Karen had gotten past the police roadblock that was roughly a third of a mile up the road at the nearest intersection to keep traffic out of the area. As I'm slowly maneuvering this 8,000 pounds vehicle from the roof onto its side the honking stops, maybe 8 seconds later I feel a hand grab my shoulder and attempt to spin me around. I'm 6 feet 3 inches 280 pounds so there's absolutely no way this 40-something 5-4-ish 160 pounds woman is achieving this goal. I let out a sigh as I stopped winching on the vehicle and looked at the sky with my eyes asking every god I can think of for the strength to not headbutt this bitch. I turn around and attempt to say. Me, man the road is closed due to a fatal axe dash. Karen, cutting me off I don't care what you have to say just get out of my way I'm late. Me, extremely annoyed now and talking over Karen's continued complaints. Listen bitch five people just f asterisk king died here and there is absolutely no way anyone is driving down this road for hours. I suggest turning around and driving back through the police road block you somehow got around now. Karen, opening with that line that we've all heard a thousand times. Excuse me. I live right there points back behind her vehicle and I have to use this road to get to where I'm going, you will move your truck now or I'm calling the police. By this time the forensics crew has heard all the yelling over the loudness of my truck idled up and the PTO engaged and walked over. Forensics crews do not dress like police, especially in the middle of the night on the weekends. They're dressed in plain clothes but carrying a badge on them and they'll put on a hazmat style suit if needed, none were needed on this scene just gloves and such. Karen, which one of you is the manager? This man won't move his goddamn truck and let me through, I'm calling the police. 
is actually holding the phone to the side of her head and talking to what we would later find out was 9-11. Forensic officer, ma'am I am the police and I don't know. Karen, I don't want to hear any more goddamn excuses move. The. F asterisk king. Truck. Now. Clapping between each word. Me, you. Dumb. Bitch. Do. Your. Two. Remaining. Brain. Cells. Constantly. Compete. For. Third. Place. Forensics officer, stifling a chuckle ma'am if you don't get in your car and leave this crime scene now you will be arrested. Just as the F.O. finished saying this a squad car came screaming down the road from the same direction Karen came from and stopped behind her vehicle. The officer hopped out of his car and the very first words he said were Karen's Miranda rights. Karen screamed, kicked, swore that everyone else should be arrested and even tried to spit on me, which caused her to catch a tampering with evidence charge as we're on an active crime scene. By the time it was all done her other charges were, obstruction, assault on an officer, misuse of 911, interfering with an investigation. She took a deal that netted her 18 weekends in the county jail. However I did tow her car as well. Monday morning I met her husband and he couldn't have been more embarrassed as he apologized over and over as he paid me and then inspected the vehicle and signed off we didn't damage it. The impound cost roughly $600 as it was police initiated, after hours and storage. Charges were $150 impound, $50 after hours, $52 a day storage and $5 a mile each direction from our office, our office was roughly 15 to 17 miles from there. Most grocery stores here in Canada have a few expectant mothers parking spaces that are intended for pregnant women or parents with babies to use. They are generally closer to the door usually beside the handicapped spaces or cart corral. I am currently seven months pregnant and was following Alexis into the parking lot and I planned to use one of these spaces, the Lexus ahead of me took this space. I didn't think much of it and parked about four or five spaces down from it. As I'm walking into the store the woman in the Lexus, mid-sixties, saw that I was very visibly pregnant and says oh I'm so sorry I didn't realize and laughed at me. I'm hormonal and it probably wasn't necessary but I responded with you're obviously not that sorry since you parked in a spot you shouldn't have. She proceeded to get about a foot from me and scream at me fuck you, you're not entitled to this spot. I was caught off guard and started crying, not proud of this but the hormones are intense sometimes. Thankfully bystanders don't like it when people yell and physically intimidate a pregnant lady and about five people came over to rip her a new one. Telling her she's way out of line and I'm the only person they see who is entitled to the space. One gentleman, my hero, actually called her a Karen she got back into her car and left. I just don't understand why she felt the need to confront me, did she think apologizing for her intentionally shitty behavior would make her look less like a Karen? Like I wasn't going to say anything I just assumed she needed it because she had a baby or whatever, but she didn't. So that's my crazy Karen story, mild compared to most here but it was honestly scary.